Hasan, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. And uh, thank you for having me. It's such an exciting time for this industry, so much happening, and it's challenging, obviously. Where do you see, at the moment, the greatest opportunities lying for, for you in this environment? Well, uh, first of all, let's talk about the environment. We are heading in an environment with high inflation rates, potentially increasing interest rate environment, and a very uncertain capital markets. In those conditions, it's um, highly likely that real assets will play a big part into the future uh, of where private equity investors will be investing, and also in assets like models. Uh, but also the overshadowing kind of I think, impact is food supply and technology, which will continue to play a big part in what we do in the future. I described it as an exciting time for you because private equity often finds the opportunities in these sort of dislocated kind of markets, doesn't it? Tell me about the history there and where you see this industry as being able to capitalise on those opportunities. So Emma, private equity have always thrived in challenges and it's perfectly fine. So I think the industry today is about five decades old and there is no reason it can continue to survive. So. In that environment, where do you at InvestCore see yourselves focusing on in the next sort of 12 to 24 months? Um, over the next 20 to 24 months, we have been quite active in healthcare, technology, business services. This is InvestCore's bread and butter. We have done it very, very successfully over the last 40 years. And I suspect we'll continue to do that in the next 40 years. Um, InvestCorp, as many of the other private equity investors, have been quite active in operational changes. Operational changes in businesses you can continue to do despite the inflationary environment, despite the interest rate environment, and that's perfectly fine. So my point is, private equity have survived the test of time, have survived challenges, have survived the inflationary environment, not just in Europe and the US, but all in many other parts of the world. There is no reason why they can't continue. The asset class itself have seen higher returns compared to many other asset classes, and there is no reason that would change. We at InvestCorp, we learn from the history, we learn from what we have done, we learn from our mistakes, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, where we have made money is where we have teamed up in the middle market with family-owned businesses, usually being the first institutional capital into those businesses, and supporting local businesses go global. That will continue to be the motto of what we do, supporting local businesses, predominantly in the US and in Europe going global. And that support may be more needed than ever in this environment as well. Um, the geopolitics of the world is changing in a very rapid manner. Uh, the world is becoming a bit bifurcated between the China camp versus the US camp, and now increasingly, most likely, the Russia camp. Um, let's see how that world settles and let's see how the world will shape up. I think the beauty of private equity investing in general is you tend to be very observant of how the world evolves before making decisions of how and when to go about investing. InvestCore have also launched their infrastructure investment platform. Tell me about that yeah. and what that so, uh, so in a rising interest rate and inflation environment, um, you want to be the safe haven for capital. Uh, real assets being real estate and infrastructure plays a very, very important part in that. InvestCorp is one of the oldest real estate investors and also one of the biggest top five US foreign investors in US real estate. We have invested about $3 billion per annum in North America, about a billion in Europe. That momentum will continue. As we look into that infrastructure or real asset asset class, it is very clear to us that infra is one of the most important aspects. And it's very interesting. It is arguably the one asset class that have abundance of demand in North America, Europe, Africa, Middle East, China, Southeast Asia, across the globe. There is a need for infrastructure upgrades. North America is a great market for us. You know, we've been there for 40 years. It's a natural location for us to start our infrastructure investing outside the business. And you've described it there as a, a safe haven. Yeah. Do those really exist in this sort of environment? Do you really believe that, that there is a safe haven at the moment? On a relative basis. Everything we do in investing is on a relative basis. On a relative basis, North America has always been a safe haven for investors, public and private markets, and that is terrific. And that is where we should be continuing to invest. There's obviously been a lot on the agenda this week about ESG. It's become 
obviously integral to, to business now. It's not a sort of bolt on, it, it, it's, it's in, integrated into everything. Where do you see that going? Where do you see the opportunities? There's been a lot of talk this week of it becoming much more of a focus on impact rather than just ticking an ESG box because of risk. Yeah. So first relating to ESG, I hope that um, us and investors we do not go down the path of viewing it as a box ticking exercise for the benefit of LPs based on their demands. Um, we as investors need to be responsible, regardless what's the theme of the month, whether it's ESG or whatever it is. And that approach of being a responsible investor, it's, it's a responsibility, which as business owner you take with you. So I think that is the starting point. Now in terms specifically to ESG, it is terrific to see what a lot of the investors, and I give a lot of credit to the Scandinavian and Canadian investors who are really taking the lead on this, um, into driving that forward. Um, uh, clean tech, and most likely food tech, will play a very, very important part into uh, that ESG investing. We at Investment, we at Investcorp, we are looking at uh, certain vehicles that will be very, uh, particularly around uh, climate change, um, kind of a focused initiatives. And I hope in the next six to nine months, we can announce a, a very clear uh, investment um, uh, direction uh, specifically into the ESG funds. In order to be able to find those opportunities and, and, and capitalize on them and, and, and take and seize them, you need the right sort of teams in place, don't you? Tell me about what you look for in terms of the talent within your business and how difficult is it at the moment? Because there's a lot of talent shortage in yeah. the industry. Yeah. So um, the beauty of private equity, it attracts high caliber talent across the globe. Um, also, the beauty of it is uh, there is no business school you go to and you come out and suddenly you're this great private equity investor. Uh, it is very much an apprenticeship industry. Um, uh, we do a, uh, an exceptional job of recruiting young associates on an annual basis and spending an incredible amount of time with our run new sources to develop and to become private equity executives. Invesco has some of the longest tenured executives in the industry, and I'm proud of that. So our executives are with us, you know, north of plus 20 years, 30 years, and what have you. Um, that longevity brings a lot of experience, a lot of mistakes that have been done, which is as important. Um, as we go into new areas and territories, what we likely do is we likely cross-fertilize those teams between our existing resources and new resources. One great example is our team in Beijing today. Our team in Beijing is made with resources who are part of our private equity team in Europe, in London, and uh, new uh, recruits out of um, Beijing. Same thing with the team in Singapore, and that's great. It's a mix of experience and geographic local knowledge. Correct, correct. And that's a, a winning formula, I guess you, you, you see it as. Um, it, it's, um, it's a responsible formula. Whether it's winning or not, time will tell, based on the investments we do. There's 3,000 people here this week. It's the largest ever Super Return International. How good is it for you to see this industry back together like this? And, and what do you hope they take away from having chatted to you yeah. this week? Well, first, it's terrific. Really, it's terrific to see you know old colleagues, old friends, you know, for the last few years, kind of being here at the, at the conference and what have you. Um, every single one of us have lived the last two years, probably in some room with a yeah, camera and a, a monitor. So it's really terrific that the world has evolved and we're back to some sense of normality. Um, there is a lot of uh, reacquainting. There is a lot of um, uh, a lot of investors who are still uh, in that phase of what have you been up to the last two years. Uh, so in that respect, uh, that is positive. Um, I am pleased that uh, Investcorp is here in full force. Uh, we have, uh, when I say full force, not in terms of number of people, but in terms of uh, uh, product areas and investment groups. Uh, we have three of our investment groups, our European, US, and technology groups. Our GP staking team, which is the very first time we come to Super Return. Uh, for them, it's not only a chance to meet potential investors, but investee companies and GPs that they can invest in. So it's a terrific forum, and I hope it's going to be, you know, kind of, you have a strong presence from Investcorp in the years to come. I hope you thoroughly enjoy yourself, Hazan. Thank, thank you so much thank for you, joining us. Thank Great you for to see you. you. Thank you.